Um, hi everyone, hello the group. Um, we are here today to do a very short interview with Mark and Rocio about the sort of past, present and the future of the EMAs, asking them questions and um, talking about um, the visions and the ideas for it. So Mart, looking back over the last 20 years, what are some of the most uh, significant research insights and um, contributions that this field has made? Okay, before answering your question, what's important to know is the history of MS. You know, it was a very small group of scholars, below 10, trying to understand new dynamics inside the third sector. All these scholars were very interested in cooperative, in non-profit organization, and they were looking at the field and observing movements. And so this very small group met every six months during four years to develop the first approach to social enterprise. This is the origin of MS. So today when you go, you see this big conference, this nice summer school, all these papers. But it's very important to understand that to, at the origin of this dynamic, small group of scholars very committed to this question. So, second question, what is the main added value of this network? I think the main message is the following. To understand these enterprises, these social enterprises, these social economy organizations, these solidarity based organizations, whatever the label, what's important is that these organizations are committed to the common good. You need different lenses. You need people coming from business school. You need people from political science, from sociology, from economics, from design. And it's very important to cross these, these lenses to understand what's going on. Wonderful. And if we throw forward to the future, what are some of the most exciting streams or approaches that you think we're going to be aware of in this community? I think, of course, we can capitalize on all these results regarding social enterprise, regarding these different analytical lens, regarding the empirical data we have, regarding the diversity of SE model that we know much better now. But no, I think that the key challenge as a scholar is to try to understand the contribution of this organization to the deep transformation of our society, which is urgent. Hello, I want to tie um, to the previous question that Kai asked, maybe forward this question to you, Rocio. Could you maybe elaborate on what Marta said earlier about the small community of 10 scholars coming together and starting all of this, but from the point of view of the community, how did it start? What is it, what sort of animal is it nowadays and how is it going to develop? Where do you see it going? So, you know, as, as uh, Marta was saying be before, and this is something that we always like to, to underline, uh, MS is a community of researchers by researchers and, you know, for researchers, made up by researchers and with researchers. I mean, I think that this spirit, you know, we always talk uh, about the self-help uh, also driver, you know, of MS that I think was very, very important. And it was at a moment 20 years ago, formally established uh, the association, the network, where the field, the political and the research field, the scientific field, was in, in existent, right? So I think that the idea of forming this community was very much, as I said, you know, self-help based. And I think that as we grew, we realized that there was something going on, right? Uh, students, new researchers came on board, even, you know, senior researchers who had been working in other fields came closer and they were very intrigued by what, what was happening, you know, the phenomena that were happening outside, but also the discussions, the scientific discussions that were happening. So we began to, to, to grow, 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 and it was in institutional members that came on board first. But then in 2013, that was a key year because we had so many requests at first, we were based and we were an European association that was the name of the, of the association, was MS European Research Network work and out of the request really of people that we were collaborating with that came to the events that want to do research together 
we said, okay, let's just open this up. This is so relevant in other parts of the world. The, the, the discussion has to be enlarged so as to include, you know, the other continents, other disciplines, you know, all these other backgrounds that we know are relevant in order, you know, to, to enrich uh, uh, the scientific field, but also the community. And as to where I see it, you know, in the future, I mean, I think that one of the highest and really unique uh, added values of, of MS is really the relationship that we have with the next generations of, of uh, researchers. This is not just, you know, a, a motto, this is not a marketing or, or anything, you know, tactic, it's that we really believe, I mean, that this is the only way that you can make the work, the work that has been done, but also the possibility to be relevant in this transition, uh, this, this urgent transition that we have to do uh, in order to, to face all that, that, that we have ahead of us, uh, we have to remain relevant for society and you can only do that if you get, you know, these new generations engaged, empowered to become, you know, a, a agents of, of change within the academia but also beyond. So in that sense, I think that also the PhDs that, c that come to the community, they are special, you know, and we always like to say it and, and I'm always very proud of you know going and saying you know no no uh, you know our PhDs are actually special breed you know I always say that they're special breed of, of uh, researchers because they're very committed they're very engaged and they know that what they're doing is meaningful and is relevant for society thank you oh there's another one <laughs> what is your vision what is the advice that you'd like to give to this new generation of researchers of the MS community for the next 20 years so maybe I would like to add some things to what Rocio just told us. To understand MS, to understand the DNA of MS, of course it's an intellectual community, but it's also a human community. And I think that the quality of the knowledge we have developed could be understood because we have these two pillars. You know, of course we are doing science, but to do good science, this question of human relationships, the, the fact that we respect each other is very important. So I want to keep this treasure mm -hmm. for uh, the future. Then the vision. You know, I don't know what will be the next uh, research project. As Rocio said, what we did and what we are doing is to invest in the next generation and that's the best decision we took and so it's the next generation who have to put the main issue on the table to develop new research projects the next generation but also when you look at the history you could see um, ms in the origin as a small club of mainly men white men and we took an important decision is to open this club to young generation to other kind of epistemology to people from the south and so it's very important uh, because it's only based on this different kind of profile and point of view that we can shape the new research project for the coming years mm -hmm. thank you so I would say, completely agree with what Matt said, but I would say in terms of advice, as you were saying, mm. I mean, I would say do not be alone. Mm. Do not allow yourself to be alone and to feel alone. I mean, if there's something that we know is that we are interdependent and this is both in our lives, but also in our research, in our professional world, and I think that it's very, and this links with what Marthe was saying, you know, we are a community of scholars, we're an intellectual community, but we are a human community uh, first and foremost. And I think that you should not ever feel alone because I think that also the, the, the impact that we, and, and the change that we will be able to bring about, even in, in a small, you know, part, it will be much more doable and possible if we do it collectively. So without any doubt, do not stay alone. <laughs> I would like to add something. When we think about uh, social enterprise, solidarity economy, we know that we need activists, people committed 
on the ground in enterprise, but we need also the university. And we have to play the rules of the knowledge too. So it's important to train this next generation of PhD because we need professors, we need to publish in high level academic journals. I know it's not easy, but it's very important uh, for the future of this sector, or not sector, this kind of organization and uh, their recognition in the society. So we need this pluralistic, um, uh, different type of profile, uh, activists, uh, policy makers, but we need also people inside university teaching the next generation, doing research, publishing. And so what we are do, trying to do with this summer school is also to train this generation to do that and to give the message, yes, it's possible. With this kind of topic, you can stay also at the university and play the rules of the university. Even you seem a little bit of the world. <laughs> thank you. I think it's a wonderful way to end off. Happy birthday yeah. to us. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Happy you birthday to you all. <laughs> yeah, does it make sense for you to sit <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it.